Have you ever been bombarded by the noise of a plane cruising through the sky and thought about the science that propels those mighty aircraft in the air? Have you ever wondered what makes it all possible? You have just tuned in for a wild ride through the physics that propels those massive steel birds we call airplanes. Ready for takeoff? Let's go! Do you know the first flight was inspired by birds flying high in the air? But who made it possible for humans to fly alongside those birds? Well, before getting started with the exploration of any invention, it's completely unfair to move on without appreciating scientists who have worked tirelessly to make your daily lives so convenient. You might be thinking that you have only heard about the Wright brothers who have been regarded as the pioneers of aviation technology. But you might be surprised to know that Sir Isaac Newton was the man who gave the world the theoretical background for taking up the challenge of flying. Don't you remember Newton's third law of motion which states that for every action, there's an equal reaction in the opposite direction? Well, science does not merely rely on theoretical concepts but rather thrives on achieving the end results. So, Newtonian principles ignited the idea, and scientists around the globe took the challenge of making it a reality. They kept on experimenting with machines that were capable of flying high in the air. Initially, steam engines were used to create enough power to nullify the impact of gravity. Things might have not worked for them and they failed in their ventures. But that's the beauty of science. Hits and trials of fellow scientists only serve to mark prohibited ways while testing out new ideas. The final target was quite clear, the only requirement was to carve out a successful path for achieving the target. It's worth mentioning the fact that all the initial flying engines were unmanned. And the goal was to make human-controlled flight possible. So, the need for further experimentation was undeniable. Finally, the first human-controlled jet engine took a successful flight in 1903 that was led by Orville Wright. The Wright brothers cracked the formula to use gas engines in a jet successfully. It was a 12-horsepower engine that used to run on the power of combustion. In their first test flight, this gas-powered jet took off from a cliff and landed in the planes which were at a lower altitude. Unfortunately, this flight only lasted for only 12 seconds but proved to be a stepping stone in the evolution of modern aviation. Well, it's quite obvious that the initial idea was just a blueprint. It needed much fine-tuning if we were going to achieve flights that could traverse long distances. Around three decades later, British pilot Frank Whittle and German engineer Hans von Ohain independently designed these revolutionary engines in the late 1930s. They went for the compartmentalization of the initial combustion engines and paved the way for what we call jet engines today. Surprisingly, it's combustion that powers all the engines, whether you consider car engines, rockets, or any other vehicle. But what sets jet engines apart? We will dive into it in just a bit. But before we uncover the physics principles that govern the flight of jet engines, there's another engineering marvel that glides through the vast oceans. Don't you want to know about the physics behind those mighty giants of water? Just click the link in the top right corner. Now, let's get back to the physics that power the flight of a jet engine. It's pointless to get inside every screw that contributes towards the functioning of jet engines, so we will just be considering the major components that include a fan, compressor, combustor, turbine, and nozzle. These components work together to create the thrust that propels an aircraft into the boundless skies. For airplanes to take a flight above the ground, you can definitely imagine the amount of air that needs to be fed into the compressor. But what's the amount of air needed to power the compressor? When we say that it's going to be a wild ride, we really mean it. Can you imagine the might of a fan that can gulp down a staggering 1.2 tons of air every second during takeoff? You can't even think of going closer to a running fan. Even if you dare to, you can feel yourself drawn towards it, and finally end up being torn into pieces by the blades of the fan. Progressing to the compressor, a powerhouse in its own right, this compartment squeezes air with relentless force. 
Comprising green fans that gradually reduce in size, the compressor exerts relentless pressure, compressing the air into smaller and smaller areas. What's the point of confining this much amount of air inside a compressor? The answer lies in the fact that the plane is meant to fly, and not meant to speed up in the forward direction. Blades rotate at 1000 miles per hour while taking in 2600 pounds of air every single second. Having inhaled so much air, here comes the point when compression ratios inside the compressor exceed 40 to 1, a feat that defies conventional understanding. To make it easier for you, let's rephrase it. The air that enters the compressor is 40 times more pressurized than the air that once entered the compressor. Now this highly pressurized air enters the combustor. As soon as the compressed air that was previously intensified by the compressor's work combines with the fuel, a controlled combustion process ensues. While you might be sitting inside an air-conditioned cabin, the temperatures within the combustor may reach up to 2000 degrees Celsius. Here, potential energy, accumulated during earlier stages is coupled with the heat produced by combustion. Just imagine the speed of air molecules that have been pressurized and heated, so they can leave the engine with enough kinetic energy that's needed to propel the aircraft forward. For all the years, you might have been complaining about the absence of the application of laws of physics in your daily lives, and here comes the application of the law of energy conservation. You may ask, how? Within the turbine, the intricate physics of energy transfer can be seen as the turbine blades convert the thermal energy contained in the pressurized and heated gases into mechanical energy that makes the turbine move. Just like the fan was used to suck more air inside an engine, turbine blades help the air move out of the engine more speedily. The more the amount of air exiting the turbine, the greater will be the reaction force. The whole process started off with the entry of air, now the air has to move out. But the final exit of expanded gases through a nozzle is not just a release, it also involves the birth of dynamic force that propels the aircraft forward in a spectacular display. The action stimulated by the release of gases at the rear end of the aircraft results in a reaction force called thrust, which makes the mighty aircraft move in the forward direction. Often underestimated in its importance, the nozzle assumes the crucial role of the ultimate determinant of thrust. Engineers carefully design nozzles to optimize aerodynamics and minimize undesirable noise effects. As soon as the expanded gases rush through the nozzle, the high-speed ejection of gases from the nozzle can generate intense noise. It's the same roar that you hear when you see a plane flying high in the sky. And there you have it, a captivating journey through the physics behind the marvel of jet engines. From Newton's timeless principles to the cutting-edge technology of today, we hope this exploration has ignited your curiosity. Join us at Physics Daily, where every day is an adventure into the captivating world of physics.